I think that it's finally safe enough for me to tell this story. I've spent the last week in a mansion that was left to rot by some rich millionaire somewhere who has more money than I'll ever have. Their name wasn't important to me at the time, but I won't forget it now. The Wolf family name will forever remain a part of my memory, along with the trauma and horrors that I faced while squatting in their mansion. I've always had the mindset that the ultra-rich just bought houses to flaunt their wealth and never actually used them, and I thought that was the case with this mansion. Boy, could I not have been more wrong. For the first time, while homeless, I was truly terrified to be in a house. I think that once I'm finished fully telling this story, it'll make more sense why someone like me would say that. It's the peak of winter in January, as my time of writing this. I was staying in a house just outside of Detroit when I was chased out by the cops. These people have no care for other humans and only care to enforce the laws that suit them. Seeing as how they wouldn't let me stay in that home, I decided to look around Detroit for a safer place to live. After walking a few miles in the cold, I managed to come across a house that seemed too good of a deal. It was on a single lot facing an empty road that leads off of another neighborhood, and it had its own cul-de-sac. It was a massive house with a street and a driveway all to itself. I found it kind of weird at first for a house like that to be alone, especially cut off from the main street especially when all of the other houses around it were so massive and expensive looking. Once I got closer to it though, things started to make a little more sense. The house appeared to have been built a long time ago, having probably been built before the rest of the neighborhood, and the owner probably wanted to have his own spot away from the rest of the neighborhood. Greedy bastard. Who goes out of their way to make a separate road for yourself and your big house? Who wouldn't want someone to be there in case you needed some help? It's questions like this that ran through my head as I came up to the front entrance to the house. It was closed off with a massive gate that leads out to the estate, with a row of trees lining each side of the road leading to the mansion. There was a thick fence connected to stone pillars that gated in the entrance to the mansion with the family name of Wolf imprinted above the main gate but a part of the fence had the bars bent just large enough to allow me to squeeze into it. I decided to enter through it and pass through the bars into the estate. Seeing as how it was later in the evening, the mansion cast a deep shadow over the estate. The empty branches of the trees stretched out like webs, hoping that the long and scraggly lines the shadows made in the snow and dirt would capture something that the soul of the estate would enjoy devouring. I made my way towards the mansion, making sure to hide in between the trees as I made my approach to it. The community I was in wasn't a gated community, but I didn't want to bring any unwanted attention to myself. As I made my way up to the mansion, there seemed to be no signs of life anywhere. Even though it was in the dead of winter, I expected something to be around. Some sound like distant cars honking or random animals moving in the distance. There was nothing, no sound, no voices, not even other people coming into or leaving their house. It almost seemed like everything vanished around me, as far as noise is concerned. All of the lights were dark, and this mansion was no different. The closer I got to it, the more disturbed I felt at the lack of sound. The atmosphere about this house was different in every way that I could really think from a normal house but it wasn't enough to deter me from the house and risk freezing to death in the cold. The mansion was a large three-story house with what looked like several rooms and a large entryway. There was a set of double doors at the front that blocked my way from walking inside. I was almost certain that the doors would be locked, but something in my gut told me to try them anyway. To my surprise, they were unlocked and opened up to allow me in. The foyer was massive and led to several different rooms. What was strange about it was that there was a lone TV leading off right next to the staircase that leads upwards to the rest of the house. It appeared to be a tube TV, the last of its kind before flat screens showed up. 
I remember seeing stuff like this in my uncle's antique shop before it went bankrupt. He would sell TVs like this to people who had the money to waste on collecting useless and outdated junk. Maybe they found some value in it. I don't know. I gravitated towards the TV and decided to play with it. I couldn't find a remote for it, but the buttons on the front of it seemed to work. I turned the TV on and ended up having to tweak it a bit to get it to work. It seemed like a bunch of channels didn't work until I started scrolling up past 100 channels. From there I was able to see the fuzz that the TV was producing start to fade away and the noise alter as the picture took shape and revealed old shows that I used to watch when I was a kid. Old sitcoms played for a while and filled the otherwise empty house with a little bit of comfort as the walls reverberated with the conversations of actors older than the roles that they played, making cheesy jokes and skits over canned laughing tracks. As cringeworthy as that might be, it made me feel a lot more at ease to hear that going on, to just watch the TV for a little while before I went around the house and tried to settle in. I decided to look for a mattress to bring into the main living room so that I could be able to see who was coming and leave at a moment's notice if need be. I went to one of the smaller rooms and pulled out a decent sized mattress to bring into the living room. I didn't think that I would be there long, but I didn't expect my stay to be very short either. I continued to watch the TV for a bit as I tried to unwind so I could fall asleep. As my eyes began to close, I noticed something weird take shape. I was watching the sitcom and chuckled a little bit at a joke as my eyes began to close when something jolted me awake. I heard a harsh static coming from the TV and saw that it turned to static. I got up and went to turn it off, but it stopped as the TV turned itself off right as I reached the power button. I thought to myself, how weird was that, but eventually played it off as just a power outage and decided to head to sleep. All things considered, I slept great the first night and would only sleep relatively well that night. The next day, I went back into the city to try and get enough food for the day. To my surprise, people were more generous today on their way to work. I managed to get enough money to buy some food for the next few days. My newest problem was trying to find a way to get showered up and cleaned up. I figured I could shower in one of those convenience stores that had a shower. I had enough of my own soap and everything this time, so I didn't have to shoplift. That was a relief that made the shower feel all that more rewarding. I decided to go and wash my clothes in a nearby laundromat since I had enough left over to afford that. I would rather be clean and look clean enough to try and see if there was any way I could find work and finally get off the streets. I got a weird look from a couple of ladies when I came in with my bag and pack of detergent. I tried my best to ignore them, as I usually ignore people who give me weird looks when I enter places. I was on a mission, and I wasn't going to let these people deter me from getting my stuff clean before I went back to the streets. After my clothes were clean, I decided to head out along the main stretch of the city to look for places that I could apply for a job. After finding a decent restaurant with a laid back but upscale atmosphere and a help wanted sign on the restaurant window, I decided to head on in and see if I could apply. After a bit of chatter, I managed to get an application out of the manager and filled it out. They tried to tell me that they would give me a call back if they were interested, but I had to explain how I didn't have a phone and I was on my own without letting them know that I was homeless. To my surprise, they sat me down and read through my application and decided to perform an impromptu interview. After a few questions, I managed to get confirmed for a job as a waiter there and felt a sense of thrill wash over me. I left that restaurant after giving my many thanks and made my way back to the mansion. I was so excited to start my new job the next day. My plan was to build up as much cash as I could while I stayed there to get my own place, a phone, a car, and everything else that I needed to finally be on the right track with my life towards something I could be proud of. If only things were ever as much as a walk in the park as that interview. I made my way back to the house and realized the TV was on. I started to panic and went to turn it off and started to search around the house. I pulled out my flashlight from my pack and started to make my way down all of the halls to investigate. My concern was that someone else had found out that someone broke into the house and was lurking around the estate. I made my way slowly and quietly down the halls, 
flashing my light into each of the rooms and peering around each corner. Each one of the rooms was covered in dust and were left either barren or had random furniture in them, so there weren't too many places whoever got in here could hide. I made my way to the back of the house and jumped when I heard something massive slam on the floor. My mind was racing now with what it could possibly be. A person? A beast? Something worse? I wasn't sure. What could be at the end of this hallway? But I was running out of possibilities real fast. I turned the corner of the last section of the hallway on the third floor and flashed my light towards the end. In a corner, two eyes reflected light back at me. I took a sigh of relief and realized the thing looking back at me was a raccoon. I flashed a light at it and it ran towards a window and hopped out. It was one of the most bizarre things that have happened to me in a long time. I decided to head over to the ledge and flash my light down into the snow and saw that I had run off somewhere away from the house. With the raccoon gone, I felt calm enough to return to the mattress and try to get some rest. I could hear a low hum that night that kept waking me up, but it wasn't the worst thing I had to sleep through. The next day I went to work and managed to build up a nice amount of tips while I waited on a couple of dozen tables. It was a lot of work but I managed to build up a reputation as a good waiter and collected just over $200. It was good enough for me to start considering where I could start looking to stay. It made me think about trying to get my life together, you know? This restaurant was upscale and had its own uniform set up, but seeing as how they provided me with everything that I needed, I would just need to keep it clean and I'd be set. I decided that I would only stay in the mansion for the rest of the week and work on building up my cash. My impulses were getting the best of me though. I went to one of my local dealers and decided to pay for a couple of tabs of acid to be able to celebrate. He cut me a good deal and sold me two tabs for $15, and I went on my way to grab some food and make my way back out to the mansion. That night was a lot of fun. Having turned on the TV right before I took one of the tabs, I started to have a ton of fun hallucinations take shape and felt more at peace with myself, which helped me fall asleep so I could be rested and ready for work again. I slept through most of the night but was jolted awake by the sound of things slamming in the house. I decided to look around again but couldn't find anything in the rooms like before. I made my way to the top of the house and looked down the hallway with my flashlight and came across two eyes. I froze because of where the two eyes were. I saw two white eyes reflecting back at me from the ceiling. I waved my flashlight at it and a thing crawled away down the hall. I slowly made my way around the house looking for those same eyes again, but I couldn't find them, whatever it was left, and I was once again alone. I couldn't really fall back asleep again, so I made my way out to work. Work was great and I brought in even more tips than yesterday, but I couldn't help but think about the thing I saw looking back at me in the mansion. It wasn't small, it only crawled on the ceiling. I saw it twist its head at me a couple of times to get a better look at me before I drove it off at the flashlight. After thinking about what it could have been, I assumed it was just the after effects of the acid tabs that I took that lingered with me after I woke up. Either way, I was thinking even harder about getting off the streets and was looking for apartments today. I found one that was housing people at just shy of $700 a month. They wanted a down payment on it, but it wasn't much. I figured that I could get the apartment payment sorted within a few more days, so I decided to work an extra hour in the night to try to earn a few more tips. It garnered me another $100 on top of the tips it earned me that night and made the apartment within my grasp. I wasn't content though. I wanted enough money to last me through that month so I wouldn't risk eviction in case something happened to my job or the tips started to dwindle. So I made my way back to the mansion again, and that night, Everything started to get weird. I started to notice that there were tracks in the snow around the fence. I figured that some kids had decided to come and mess around the estate. I hope they enjoyed their exploration now because of the harsh reality of exploring and looking for a home when you have nothing is a lot less glamorous than going urban exploring. I liked the way that I felt when I took the tab of acid the night before, and despite my better judgment, 
I decided to take the second tab. Things were fine at first, and I decided to keep the TV off at night and just allowed my brain to roam the house. I went around the house laughing as different paintings of the family that used to live there took funny shapes. I was having a good time until I saw a large figure at the end of the hallway. Looming in the corner like everything else I would shine my flashlight at did. I waved my flashlight at it and it didn't move. It just stood there, staring. I started to back away, realizing that this figure was easily a foot taller than me. I moved my flashlight in the process, trying to make sure that I didn't fall over the furniture that the raccoon had knocked over. When I pointed my flashlight back at the corner though, the figure was gone. I decided to look around the house some more, but couldn't find that figure again. Something about this house just didn't seem right. Maybe it was the acid, maybe it wasn't. Things were making less and less sense when I came back to the living room and saw the TV was on. I didn't remember turning it on, but I was too tired after all of that to care. I turned it off and went to sleep on the mattress. I slept a little more soundly that night, but woke up extra early to a loud slam. I wanted to see if it was another raccoon, but I didn't have the time to explore before I headed off to work again. I grabbed what was important and decided to head out with everything that I needed, rather than leave it unattended and risk someone looting all of my money and supplies that I had gathered. I now realize that doing that was probably the smartest decision I have ever made. I made my way to work and managed to make even more tips that day. Surprisingly, having enough money left over after my shift for the apartment, a prepaid phone, a nice meal, and some more acid. I decided to skip on the acid and went ahead to reserve myself an apartment and went looking for a prepaid phone. I didn't find the one that I wanted and I'm glad that I decided to skip on it after all. I bought a nice meal for myself and made my way to the mansion after. It was a satisfying day for me, all in all, but I couldn't help but feel like I was being followed on the way back up to the estate. As I made my way through the snow, I kept seeing shadows all around me, and I could hear crunching noises, as if someone's boots were crunching in the snow and rocks underneath them. I made my way quickly back into the mansion and tried to settle in for the night. I turned on the TV and tried to use it to relax for a bit, but that was ruined when I heard a loud screeching noise come from the TV box. I tried to turn it off, but the power button stopped working. I then tried to look for the cable to the TV and realized that it was fried and was permanently connected to the power outlet. I tried tearing it out of the wall, but that didn't work. Right as I was almost about to pull the cable out, the TV stopped making that screeching noise, and I decided to inch my way over to the front of it. What I saw made me fall back onto the mattress, and is something I don't think I'll ever be able to forget. A single large hand loomed on the screen, outstretched and open, as if trying to grasp at something. It was just hung there in the static, almost as if it was trying to reach out through the television to grab me. And that's when I heard the voice that I will not forget. It appears that we have a trespasser here, Master Wolf. What would you suggest that we do with him? The sound of an old-timey butler that you would hear in famous movies rung loud through the TV, almost like a bell when it hit me. The voice that followed got me back up on my feet and set me into a run. Bring them to me. I grabbed my belongings and began to run, only looking back to see the TV I turned off and I started to hear voices and noises surround me as I ran. Shadows of outstretched hands began to take shape in the snow as I ran away from the house. The closer I got to the gate, however, the sooner I realized that there were footsteps chasing after me. I ran faster and threw my bag over the fence as I made my way through the gap, but right as I was about to exit the estate, something grabbed my shoulder and caused me to scream as I tugged and pulled away from whatever had grabbed me. I looked back after it tore part of my shirt off and I fell into the snow. What I saw will be imprinted into my brain for the rest of my life. I looked back and saw the image of a baby on the top of the fence with white eyes and sharpened teeth, and right below it was a man surrounded in shadows, like the baby above it with glowing eyes and pointed white teeth. I grabbed my pack and didn't look back at the house anymore as I ran out of the neighborhood 
and ran back into the city. I realized when I got into town that it was a good thing that I didn't buy the phone just yet and could afford a hotel for the night, at least before I got into my new apartment before the week was done. I rested a little bit easier that night, knowing that I had left the house behind for the last time and wouldn't be going back. The next day I went to work with the figment of both of those figures imprinted into my mind and decided that regardless of whether they were real or fake, I wouldn't return back to that house ever again. Been about a week since I was last in that house and I managed to get a prepaid phone and get into my new apartment. Work is going well and I managed to put together the money to buy a cheap mattress and a cheap laptop so I could communicate with my family. I bought brand new white shirts and shorts so I could look somewhat clean when I did a call with them over the laptop to let them know that I was still alive and doing okay. I told them the story of my time at Wolf Mansion on Wolf Ridge Drive, but none of them believed me. All they had to say was lay off the acid. As much as I wanted to say that they had a point, I don't think that everything was hallucinated. I still can't explain everything that I saw there, but one thing is for certain. I won't go back to the last house on Wolf Ridge Drive. Thanks for listening to this creepy story. If you enjoyed this story, be sure to hit that like button as it helps me out a ton. If you're new to the swamp, why not join us and hit that subscribe button and turn on notifications to never miss a new video, as I upload them almost every single day, and all things natural and supernatural. This was a great read, and I want to thank my friend. This was a great read, and I want to thank my friend Timothy Duran for allowing me to read this story. He wrote it specifically for the swamp, so you won't find it anywhere else. If you guys aren't aware, you can download and bring your favorite Swamp Dweller Scary Stories wherever you go. You can download them on iTunes, Spotify, Stitcher Radio, iHeartRadio, and just about everywhere else you find your favorite podcast online. Thank you guys, as always, for the support you've been giving this channel. It's so amazing to see you guys help me be able to do this on a daily basis. If you have a story that you would like to share in a future video, Submit that at swampdweller.net or the email you can find in the description down below. I'd absolutely love to share your story with everyone here in the swamp. It's stories like yours that help keep this channel going. I'll see you guys soon with another creepy video.